Okay, so hello everybody. Good morning. It's uh, it's 9.45 a.m. and we've just been getting hit with a massive snowstorm. Well, it's massive to us because we rarely get snow where I live in Gig Harbor. And it's just dumping. I, I could show you outside here. Can you see out there? Can you see out there? Oh my goodness. It's just full of snow. Driveway is full of snow. Anyway, I just want to share, I want to share a word that I just received that I thought was really powerful. Um, and I think this is going to speak to some people. And we're going to talk about problems and solutions because there's always solutions to problems and problems aren't bad unless you don't have a solution. And there, God always offers us solutions. This is what I love about talking to the Lord. Anyway, this, I think it was yesterday I said, good morning, Lord. And I was just asking him, you know, I was asking him questions and I, I found that that he actually delights in answering our questions. And I know there's a lot of people who maybe you remember when you were just a little kid and you would ask your parents questions and they would get tired of answering questions. Maybe they grow impatient if you would ask questions on a, on a long road trip, like, are we there yet? <laughs> And uh, they're like, just keep quiet. You'll see when we get there. Or maybe they're just, they answered several times and then they just got tired of answering. But God doesn't tire of our questions. This is what I love about the Lord is he enjoys answering our questions and actually sees our question as a compliment that we want to be directed, that we want to grow in him, that we want to grow in wisdom and in truth and understanding. Anyway, um, trying to decide what Okay, so I have blessed you to carry out my purpose. Anyway, I'm just, I'm asking him questions and he's saying that there are times when it's okay to rest and discover fresh the direction of your calling. I know that you want to win souls around the world. You know, I always feel like, man, I gotta be winning souls. I gotta, people need to get saved. This gospel message has gotta get out. And it's true, but sometimes we feel almost this, um, it, can, it can be unhealthy to feel like you have to do this, this, and this, if it comes to a point where you're not actually taking time to rest and allow for you know, proper balance. And so this is what I'm loving about the snow, is it's created the opportunity for me to actually sit and rest and spend time just talking with the Lord and just enjoying him and enjoying family and enjoying just chilling, uh, which, you know, we don't tend to do very often because there's always more to do. There's always more people to help. There's always more areas where we can serve. And, and I feel like that the Lord is just saying that this is something that's really been a blessing to many people is learning how to take time to rest and sometimes he has to interrupt our our normal cycles and patterns so that we can actually have the opportunity to sit and rest in him so um let's see don't feel pressure he said don't feel pressured to accomplish everything at once you are and have been very effective at equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry and for that i am grateful there are times when i see you sitting and resting and i smile knowing that you are enjoying the journey i am so glad that you desire to understand i am so glad that you value my wisdom it's fun for me to witness your desire to see fruitfulness you have been fully empowered to do great things on the earth i will release unto you Okay, now this is a personal word, what he's saying he's going to release, which is incredible. <laughs> I'm not going to share that part. Um, he said, I'm not finished, but just getting started at blessing you. There are times when I look on the, on the lands I created and wonder who will say yes next. And then I see that you will, and I am pleased. When the Lord speaks to us, it's almost like, you know, he speaks to us. Let me just turn this light down because it's like too bright. Let me just do this here. Oh, that's better, huh? Okay, lighting. So he says, there are times when I look on the lands I created and wonder who will say yes next. And then I see that you will, and I am pleased. He speaks to us like we're the only one on the planet. That's the amazing thing about God is he can love us so much and all at the same time uh, being the source of love. Many who desire to obey my promptings will be given a special kind of favor to accomplish much supernaturally. 
Those who do not even desire to inquire. Think about what he just said there. Those who do not even desire to inquire. That's a powerful uh, phrase. Uh, those who do not even desire to inquire show that they do not really know me or my goodness. I am always pleased by your pursuit. I think that this is a word that you could take for yourself. He's saying, I am always pleased by your pursuit as my person, as my people. He loves it when we pursue. That's why he said, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. So he's saying, I am always pleased by your pursuit. He'll always be pleased when you pursue him. And when you pursue him, it causes everything to come into balance because life gets balanced in our pursuit for more of him. I love when you come to me like this to see how I am doing, not just to figure out how to get blessed. How many times do you realize, like, you know, we come to the Lord sometimes saying, Lord, do this for me and I need this and help me over here. And the Lord's like, wait a minute, how about asking me a question? Like, how are you? Like, do you go to your friend and start just making a list of all the things you want your friend to do for you? Or do you say, hey friend, how are you, right? And so I'm asking the Lord, how are you? And, and it sounds like this is something that really he loves because he wants, he wants to know that we wanna see how he's doing. And so it's a rare thing, I think, for people to say, God, how are you? Are you, you know, what's on your heart today? You know, is there anything you wanna say to me? Instead of, Lord, I need this or help me do that. And you know what I mean? So then he says, I, I love when you come to me like this to see how I am doing, not just to figure out how to get blessed. You are a rare treasure to me. <laughs> I'm not going to say that part. I have been so impressed with your sense of adventure. He loves it when we have a sense of adventure. Um, a sense of adventure. And desire to learn and grow. That's true. I love to learn. I love to grow. I ask for wisdom all the time because I know he gives freely to those who ask. Today, you can continue to enjoy the snow and remember that there's a lot of food. That, uh, so no worries there. You have plenty of supplies and you have plenty of resources. Enjoy the bounty of my blessing and continue to encourage the family in my kingdom and outside. So there's, it's just another reminder. The Lord's saying, hey, you know, you're blessed to be a blessing. And by the way, you have everything that you need, so enjoy. And I, I realize I do. I, I went out and I, I'm looking in my, my garage fridge, you know, a freezer, and, and it's just stacked with food. I mean, you know, God provided that big yellowfin ahi tuna. Some of you guys saw the picture a while back. It's like 133 pounds of ahi, and I've been giving it to some special people, you know, as the Lord leads give a chunk of ahi, it's a nice gift, you know, the, the fruit of your, your labor. But, you know, God, God reminded me, you know, look out there, you got tons of food. You don't have to worry about anything. You, you know, like some people are trying to get to the store. So anyway, let's talk about problems because problems are opportunities and most people don't look at problems the right way. And that's why they get bogged down or they get uh, to where they're, you know, where they're dismayed or they're, they're feeling, feeling maybe challenged or, discouraged, some people even depressed and suicidal. So let's talk about problems for a minute. And then, you know, I want to ask you to share the post so that we can include some others in the conversation. Maybe there's somebody, you know, that needs to hear this message. Either way, um, I want to talk about problems versus solutions. One time the Lord spoke this to me. I wrote this in my first book. Uh, it's not meant to be a secret. And it was, the Lord said, Nathan, bring all your problems to my table and I will serve up solutions and together we'll have a feast. And I realized what he was saying is problems can become like fuel. And if you have problems and you bring them to the Lord, Lord, I have this challenge here. What do you want me to do? Like, like there's always going to be challenges in life. It's part of life. But what's so great is knowing who can solve every one of those things. The Lord knows what he's doing and he has a plan and it's a good plan that's made to prosper and to harm and to give a future and hope. That foundational truth of Jeremiah 29, 11, many people know the scripture, but don't really believe that God has a good plan for a desired end that's good for you. 
And so just know that God actually has plans that are made. They're not just plans, but they're plans that are already decided. And sometimes we think, oh man, I got to come up with a plan. I really need a strategy. Well, actually you don't. You just need to learn to listen for God and have a desire to be led so that he can empower your ears to be able to hear his voice so that when he speaks, faith is imparted. Faith is the shield that protects you from the spirit of fear. And when you're in faith, you will operate from that place of victory. You will operate from a place of wisdom and understanding where the anointing will come upon the words of your mouth and your thoughts will become in alignment and agreement with the thoughts of the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody share this post. I feel like it's going to be good. Anyway, I get excited to hear what I'm about to say because I don't know. And uh, I just love when Jesus can speak through us for the sake of others. Like my heart is, man, if I could help some people today, is somebody hearing me right now? <laughs> oh my goodness, if somebody could be helped. So I want you to think right now for a moment. Ooh, it's starting to snow again. Think right now for a moment <laughs> of, of, of a problem that you might be facing, a challenge that you might be facing. I know some of you, uh, you know, you've lost uh, your, your jobs. Praise God, all things will work together for the good according to his plan to make us more like him. See, the Lord sees every challenge, every problem as an opportunity to be able to trust him. And oftentimes our faith is being tested and we don't wanna be tested. We don't wanna be tested because we don't like to feel like we're being tested. But at the same time, it's like the same reason people will say, my New Year's resolution is this, this, and this. I'm going to go to the gym for 49 days straight. And then they go to the gym one day and they fizzle and they don't do it. Why does, why does that happen? That we have good intentions, but we don't actually act sometimes on them. And so the Lord's saying, hey, I want you to come up with a goal. And I really believe God's saying, come up with a goal that what do you want? your life to look like according to the spirit of God in this next year. And because I know that the Lord is wanting to do some incredible things in 2022. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I got to show you guys what's happening out here. You see my Eagle. Somebody drove up my driveway and dropped off that Eagle, that big wood carved Eagle. You guys see the snow out there anyway. Um, and whenever I think, whenever I look at the Eagle, I think, you know, they shall mount up on wings as eagles walk and not faint, run and not grow weary. Do you guys realize, like, you can actually, when you're walking with God as the friend that sticks closer than a brother, look at this. <laughs> I asked the Lord for a piano, and I just said, Lord, could I have a grand piano? I'd really love to have a grand piano. Sounds good, doesn't it? And I asked him for that because I really want him. I asked him for the piano. I think it was a week later, somebody called me um, on the phone and said, I have this, this baby grand piano and uh, I felt like God told me to give it to you. It's a a family heirloom, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that would be sweet. It's from Philadelphia. And uh, anyway, I was so blessed by, you know, this gift of the grand piano. It came out of, out of Oregon, had been in the, their family for many uh, generations. And so, you know, I felt like the Lord showed me, don't just make a goal for your new year, but actually ask God for specific things where you know it had to be God when it actually takes place. Some people aren't asking the Lord for, for anything. And I, and I get sometimes we, we can be, I don't know, a little entitled or ungrateful at times. And, and the Lord's like, instead of like asking from a sense of, I don't know if God wants to do it. How about believe that the word is true where he says, you who have, you know, you who love your children, um, give to them good gifts. How much more does your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask or you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. So the Lord told me, don't miss when you ask, but ask and believe in anything that you say, according to, of course, his will, it will be done. And so it's like you ask, but then believe that you've received. And those who believe that they've received what they've asked for, that thing that they've asked for, God actually wants to do 
uh, incredible things. And I think some people are missing it because they're not asking because they, they've been taught that if you ask that it's the wrong thing. Listen, if you don't ask, it's the wrong thing. That's why he said you have not because you ask not. And some people need to start asking God, not just questions like, how are you doing? Which is an amazing thing to ask but also to ask God, Lord, is there anything you would have me to do? And if there is something you'd have me to do, Lord, show me and I will do it. And then all of a sudden, boop, your ears are open and tentative. And, uh, and then he speaks and says, do this or come here or sit down. And then we say, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough food for the winter. And the Lord's like, oh no, go look in your freezer. Like this morning, he said, go look in your freezer. And I look in the freezer and it's packed with food. I'm like, I'm so blessed I've got food. And my wife's like, well, we need to go to the store. And I'm like, but honey, the Lord showed me to check the freezer this morning. I got all this ahi and there's chicken in there and there's pizza. The girls love pizza. And there's all this stuff. And I realized, look how blessed we are. And it's snowing. It's like dumping. Oh my goodness. It is dumping right now. I'm loving the snow. But um, but anyway, the, the point is whatever challenge you're facing, the Lord has a solution. Whatever problem that you're experiencing, God knows exactly how to adjust the circumstance. So when he spoke this to me, uh, it, it stuck with my spirit. And it was, Nathan, bring all your problems to the table and I'll serve up solutions and together we will have a feast. And I realize he's saying that your problems, those challenges that you're facing, those are actually opportunities and they will become fuel that will empower you to take action and see great results. And so I just pray for each of you that you would, that you would be exceedingly blessed in the peace of the Lord and that you would rest in the glory of the Lord and that you would recognize everything is gonna be okay. God knows what he's doing. He's got a plan. He's got a plan not just to prosper you and not harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. And so he wants us to hope for a better future and not go, oh, it's all going to go downhill from here. No, you're actually getting to, to a place where you're realizing the need for more wisdom and God who is the source of wisdom. As we seek him, we find him and we seek him with all of our heart and then nothing else uh, can you know, can be missing. Everything is, is, is intact when you pursue the Lord. Balance comes, balance comes into your life. And, um, and, uh, and, and that, that's really important. Balance is a big deal. Um, I don't know if some of you saw that word I released called balance, but it was a powerful word. There was another word last year, this, this year, uh, was valued. I think I released that this year. Oh my goodness. It's like a winter wonderland. It's like, it's like, it looks like a blizzard outside. So anyway, who needs prayer? I want to, I want to um, have you type that in right now. And also let me prophesy. There's a, a few of you, I felt like the Lord showed me, you're just really grieved about things that are going wrong in the family. Um, you know, love your family, love your family. Don't, don't try to fix anybody. Don't try to set them straight. That's not your job. Just love them. If you'll just love them, you'll see restoration in your families. Usually families get divided because of accusations. The accuser accuses, and when a person believes the accusation, they build a case against the other. Pretty soon they're divided. And so the enemy can't divide relationship if we don't believe the lie of his accusation. So the accusation comes, then he attaches it to evidence. Look, he doesn't. She always. They never and anytime you hear words like that, it's meant to divide. And the way to stay unified is to not believe the lie. If you believe the lie, there's torment. But when you believe the truth, there's freedom, there's liberty, and there's joy. <laughs> I command those migraines to loot. leave your body now in Jesus' name. Whew. And, um, and so if you recognize that problems, problems aren't bad unless you don't have solutions. But if you know that there's a solution for every single one of your problems, then you'll actually begin to access through the mind of Christ, divine wisdom and revelation, giving you the strength and the courage to be more than a conqueror through Christ. And so if there's somebody who needs a little bit more of Jesus, come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know where you're watching from, by the way. And so here's the thing. 
guys, Jesus is on the throne. He's never gonna stop reigning. He's got a plan that's good. Why don't we try to make our own plan? Why don't we try to do it our way? Instead, we can just say, you know what? All I need is him because every solution, every answer is found in who he is. He is the source of strength. He is the source of hope. He is the source of life. He is where my help comes from. If I have a deadline, he'll throw me a lifeline. If, if there's something I need, he will provide. You know, every time God asks you to do something, he's giving you an opportunity to experience divine breakthrough. If you wanna see the supernatural, <laughs> where can you find my books? Uh, my books you can find online, nathanfrenchministries.com. Um, if you really wanna learn to hear his voice real clear, uh, read through really every book. It's like a series of books. The first book is called It's Not Meant to Be a Secret. The second is Rushing the Floodgates of Heaven. And the third, the one I just released is called One. And it's all about how God commands the blessing on unity. And also every single book teaches hearing and obeying the voice of God and why that's so important. And it is amazing to really even when I go back and I read through the things God has spoken and what he has done, it's just, I marvel. Um, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I, I know that when the Lord speaks that it's incredible. If I speak, it's just okay. But I know it's not false humility. I just recognize that if God says something powerful through me, it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. The way to stay in humility is to recognize you could do nothing apart from him, but with him, nothing is impossible. So when I look through the pages of these books, the series of books, uh, you know, I look at these words that he speaks and I realize it's my most valued treasure is the things God has spoken. <laughs> it's so amazing. So like I have a safe at home and it's not, it doesn't contain cash and gold bricks. You know what I keep in my safe, what I value the most above everything else is the songs that the spirit of God has given me. I think I've written a hundred and some Christian songs. Most people don't even know that. And and, and, the, and the words that he's spoken to me personally, the things that he has said both for me and for people, um, it really is my most precious assets, you know, is the words that God has spoken to me that are personal. And I've learned that the testimony of Jesus is as the spirit of prophecy. So what Jesus is saying He's prophesying and he's no respecter of persons. So what he says to one, it's his heart for his people because he loves everyone. And so anyway, thank you for asking how do you get the books. You can go on uh, online at nathanfrenchministries.com. Uh, you can sign up. If you sign up to be a partner, uh, there was a special that we we're doing uh, right now. There's a special on there where I think it's 33 bucks or something um, to be a monthly partner. And then you don't just get one book. You get every one of the books. So you get It's Not Meant to Be a Secret for free. You get Rushing the Floodgates of Heaven for free. You get the new book, um, One for free. We ship you out all three, <laughs> which is an amazing thing. I, I've partnered with many ministries. Usually I get a little pamphlet like this with 50 pages, which is all, It's that's not why you do it. But anyway, but to get all three, these are thick books. I think 275 pages in one, 365 pages in another, 340, I think, pages in another, see, almost like a thousand pages of content of just thick, rich, glorious words from God. And so I know you'll be blessed. And the point of the books, the reason I, I believe Jesus motivates me to share like this is because he wants everyone to be able to hear what he's saying. And those books take you through everything that blocks the spiritual ears and everything that opens them. And by the time you're through about half of the first book, you'll start hearing God like never before. And that's what you can look forward to if you haven't already um, been reading those books. Who's read, has anybody read through all three of my books? If you have, I would be blessed to hear, hear about that. My wife's phone's buzzing. Okay, I wanna just say something I think is incredible. Um, one of the things that I've learned about, you know, about the Bible, one of the things that I love about reading the Bible is when you read through the scripture, uh, you know, things pop out that you need. Your spirit grabs on to what the Holy Spirit speaks through the inspired word. But let's not just be hearers of the word, but let's be doers of the word. When you take action on what you hear, that's the wise man who builds on the rock. 
The one who hears and forgets what he heard is like the one who builds on the sand. So the one who is wise is the one who hears and then does. The one who is foolish is the one who hears and forgets what he heard or she heard. So make sure that you're not just reading the scripture, being filled with faith and empowered by his truth, but that you're one who applies the word and learns to experience God in the moment. And when you face challenges, this is the best way that you can uh, be able to overcome. Now, also, I want to give you a caution. Something that I've noticed about the Bible is, is there's different translations in the Word of God. So you can find different translations, different people. Like, I mean, I know that there's Hebrew, there's Greek, there's hidden meanings that you can find in the original uh, Scripture. Um, but there's also bastardized, um, you know, translations. Now, here's an example of that. I was reading through this particular transla translation. And, and I love the scripture because the scripture is powerful, but I love also to talk to the Lord who is the, he's the living word. What we need, yeah, I like the King James Version and the New King James Version. This one is a New King James Version, um, but take a look at this. I thought this was interesting. We teach, now this is something where it talks about, um, you know, it talks about the church and it talks about uh, this person's uh, view of theology, okay? And I was reading through this because I was curious what the person who put this compilation together of Scripture in this particular Bible brand, uh, what this person, view, what he thought. And so I love all the Scripture. It's all inspired by the Holy Ghost. But look at this. It says here that we teach that there are two kinds of gifts given to the early church, miraculous gifts and divine revelation and healing given uh, temporarily in the apostolic era, for, <laughs> in the apostolic era, and then it, it said temporarily. Interesting. Okay, so I'm I'm not in agreement with this, by the way. So I want to I want to share this because I think it's important for us to understand. We teach that there are two kinds of gifts given to the early church: miraculous gifts of divine revelation and healing. That's true. Uh, given temporarily, I don't agree with that. In the apostolic era, for the purpose of confirming the authenticity of the apostles' message. Now, if the apostles' message is consistent, uh, then it's not going to say temporarily. And in the, never did the apostles claim that the, these gifts here are going to perish um, after they, they die, which is what some people believe. And that's kind of a gateway to sensationalism, which I'm totally, obviously not a sensationalist because I believe that the gifts of the Spirit are for today because the Lord is the same today, uh, yesterday, and forever. But look at what it says here. And it gives scriptural references, Hebrews 2, 3, uh, you know, 2 Corinthians 12, 12. I love those scriptures, by the way. And, and ministering gifts given to equip believers for edifying one another with the New Testament revelation now complete. Now, now carefully listen to what this says. With the New Testament revelation now complete, Scripture becomes the sole test of the authenticity of a man's message and confirming gifts of, of a miraculous nature are no longer necessary to validate a man or his message. What? Did you guys hear what that says? It says, Scripture becomes the sole test of the authenticity of a man's message. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the Scripture is the foundation for sure, and we should test everything by the Word of God. But look what it says here. And confirming gifts of the miraculous nature are no longer necessary to validate a man or his message. Well, I get why they say this. Be, I, I get that they're saying this because, you know, just because a p person moves in the miraculous does not mean that they're right with God. That's true. But certainly, this is a discredit to miracles, signs, and wonders. Who would do that? The devil would, because he doesn't like it when the people of God are empowered by the Spirit of God. And those who have become intellectual, um, you, know, um, in, in, you know, focused on the way that seems right, but in the end leads to death, they don't want miracles, signs, and wonders because they don't move in them, because they don't really believe that they're for today, and because they don't really believe that they're for today, it's actually easier for them to believe that they're not for today than to actually agree with the, uh, with the Spirit of God and actually change their ways, repent, and start moving in power. But if they've tried to pray and not seen the miraculous take place, then they justify oftentimes why they're powerless. And then they tell other people, well, the gifts passed away with the first apostles because it's easier for them to believe that they're right with God and that they 
are okay to be powerless and uh, justified in powerlessness. Ooh, there's no excuse for powerlessness. In my opinion, the spirit of God has come upon us and we are meant to be endured with power. He said, wait until the power comes from on high. Don't go minister until the power comes from on high. I'll baptize you by water, by fire, and by the Holy Spirit. Anyone who's teaching a message consistent with this bastardized scripture right here, this bastardized scripture right here, has to be able to go back and look at the facts and the reality of why Jesus even came to the earth in the first place, which is to show us how to do it. He's like, here, these things that I've done, you'll do also for I go to the Father, but wait, don't go minister till the power comes from on high because he didn't want them to go give each other a massage in their intellect, but actually to be endued with power from on high where they're moving in the gifts of the Spirit to bear the fruit of the Spirit, which would be impossible to do without operating in the gifts. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Now check this out. In 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Can you take the dogs out of here? They're fighting. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 12. And they list the scripture and the reference there. But look what the, the orator says. Miraculous gifts can even be counterfeited by Satan. Duh, because anything that's good that comes from God is counterfeited. And the fact that there's a counterfeit shows that there's also, also an original or an authentic. Because if you have a counterfeit bill, it won't spend. But if you have a, if you have a real one, it will. And uh, in people that work for banks, they actually will study the original so that they can detect the counterfeit. So you have to be able to study the original. Uh, you want to know what <laughs> what Bible? It's the MacArthur Study Bible. It's the MacArthur Study Bible. I do not agree with what this says. And here it is. Miraculous gifts can even be counterfeited by Satan so as to deceive even believers. Well, yeah, anybody could be deceived. And the problem with being deceived is you don't know you are or you wouldn't be. But look what it says. The only gifts in operation today are those non-revelatory equipping gifts given for edification. We teach that no one possesses the gift for healing today. Are you guys hearing this? This is not true. But that God does hear and answer the prayer of faith and will answer in accordance with his own perfect will for the sick, suffering, and afflicted. And what, what, what does that do? Well, it teaches people that you actually don't have any power, that it's all on the Lord, that he doesn't, you know, that, that he's sovereign, that he can do whatever he wants. Well, that's true. He is sovereign and he can do whatever he wants. But when he said, when he said, heal the sick, it's a commandment. It didn't say, pray that I would heal if it's my will. That's not what he said. But some people say, oh, but the Lord's prayer says, thy will be done. Yeah, well, so is it even God's will to heal? Oh my goodness. Well, of course the healer heals and the savior saves. The deliverer delivers. He makes all things new. He said some, did he say some things some of the time? Did he say, well, only if you believe enough will this happen? No, it's just you believe on him, the healer, and the healer heals. But do we pray and believe? Yes, this is our, our job as believing believers is that we come into agreement with who God is. He's not the God of yesterday only. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So anyone teaching, anyone teaching that the gifts somehow perished with the first apostles, get out of that place. Get out of that house. Don't go and participate in a powerless church where they're teaching this type of tummy rot. It's not okay. Powerlessness is sin. Unbelief is a demon that comes out by prayer and fasting. And some of these people have gone to cemetery or seminary and they've learned how to lose their faith. They've actually allowed people in their intellectualism to crush or to destroy the seed of faith. But you gotta operate from faith in order to see the result. But if you don't even believe that the gifts are for today, of course you're not gonna pray in such a way where you can see God begin to manifest his spirit and pour out his spirit on all flesh. In the end times, he said, I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. And so I was grieved in my spirit to hear, uh, you know, this, this, I mean, God sent me to the back of this book. Most people aren't even gonna go in and read what the, uh, what the foundational beliefs are in this beautiful looking Bible that's been bastardized by somebody who thinks that they're smarter than God. And it's unfortunate to me to see many, many people think that they're not supposed to move in the gifts of the Spirit because they've been taught by somebody who's told them 
that that's not for today, that all we need is the inspired word of God. It's like, what? You don't know that the, Jesus is the living word who came literally to show himself to us, to walk with us on a daily basis as the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so I want to pray with you, my friends, to say, hey, anyone who has been taught wrong, who has not been taught by somebody who's empowered under the anointing of the living God, that they would come out of the darkness and the depression and the discouragement of powerlessness and be fully empowered by the spirit of the living God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He wants to empower us to make disciples. He gave us the great commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel, bring the good news and heal the sick and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead. Freely you've received, now freely give. Let's pray, Father. Hmm. We know we're imperfect people who need saving. We need you, the Savior, to help us to see things clearly, to understand that we're in a process called sanctification. God, would you remove and root out the hindrance and the damage of every false teaching that's gone into the body of Christ from those who don't know you personally, who know about you and they don't even know that they don't know you because if they did know you, they could just ask you, is this translation okay? And you would tell them, no, look right here in this part of the Bible, turn to page 7, 32 or 149. Look at this. They changed that. They took out Ephesians 6 verse 10 that says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers and spirits uh, of darkness and, and put on the full armor of God. Lord, we want, we want to recognize when your living word, your words to us, and you as the living word who lives in us by the Holy Spirit, we want to know what you think about what we're reading, and we want to know what you think about what we're to do individually and personally, God, to give you glory on the earth as it is in heaven. Lord, would you help to destroy the damage that's come upon the body of Christ because of false teaching? And Lord, even those who have been hurt by leaders um, because of uh, spiritual you know, pride or uh, the judginess of hypocrisy and religiosity. God, would you restore the wounds in their soul and restore them to wholeness for your kingdom purpose. In the name of Jesus. Woo! <laughs> okay, now I, feel now I feel relieved, you know. So sometimes it's not actually something that you want to talk about. Um, you know, God gives you something to share and you don't really want to do it because it's not popular. Or it's not something that you're excited to share. Um, but I felt that grieve in the spirit when I discovered that in this particular um, Bible. But I think it's important that we recognize that the conflicts in the earth, the problems versus solutions, that for every problem, there's a solution. What's the problem that you could see here? Well, I think that the problem is that there's some people who actually think that they're smarter than God. Even those elites in the globalist agenda, they think they're smarter than the one who fashioned them in their mother's womb, the, the one who fashioned them, uh, you know, and knit them together in their mother's womb. And Jesus is the one, he's the designer of your destiny. He knows more than than we know. He knows about where he's taken us. He knows what we were designed to accomplish on the earth as it is in heaven. And so what we need to recognize is we need to recognize truth is a person. Jesus is the truth. Jesus said of himself, I am the way, not a way. I am the truth and I am the life or the source of life. And when you know that Jesus is truth and you walk with him and you talk with him and you enjoy him personally and relationally, he gets so excited. When you ask questions of him, he gets so excited and there's nothing he wouldn't do for you. If you're having a challenge in any area, he has a solution. Some of you, you're believing for miracles in your body. He's the miracle worker. Jesus heals. Jesus saves. Jesus delivers. Jesus makes all things new. He said nothing's impossible for those who believe. Do you believe it? You know, sometimes we just have to come into agreement with the word of God, the scripture. And even I've seen where people need a miracle breakthrough in their body and God says, pray for that person. And they haven't even received their miracle yet. They believe for it, but it's not quite manifest. They go pray for somebody else that has the same issue and boom, that person gets healed and then boom, their miracle manifests. So sometimes it takes for us 
to just get over ourselves enough to get a hold of the revelation of who God is through us. And as he moves through you as the hope of glory, he begins to bring healing in you. The rivers of living water are meant to flow, not be stopped up or blocked up or dammed up. Instead, we flow in the spirit of God. We flow with the spirit of God. We, we represent or represent the truth about who he is. And so if you have a challenge right now, I, I want you to think on that for just a moment and just say, what's bigger than the problem? What's bigger than the challenge? And, and, and then you can say, Jesus. You could say, Father God, I give this to you. I give this to you. I release this care. I cast it on you and I ask you to lift the burden, the weight, that, that thing that you were hoping would accom be accomplished in your children, that thing that you were hoping would be accomplished in your spouse, that thing that went wrong. Would you just say, God, I give that to you. I give that to you. I release that to you and I ask you, Lord, to lift this weight, that burden, God. I give it to you and I ask you to take it. Let me experience now your likeness and your likeness. Yeah. Yeah. I just see the light of Jesus shining on some people and lifting your countenance and giving you new hope and new courage. Jesus is the solution. He's the reason for the season. And, uh, some of you have been struggling and you've been struggling and asking the Lord, lift this thing, this take this desire, move my heart for your, what moves yours. And, and if that's you, just say, God, I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to purify my heart, Lord. I pray that you would touch my, my thinking and help my mind to be in sync with your mind, the mind of Christ. And Lord, as the hope of glory that lives in me, I ask you to help me to be a great problem solver. Lord, and pray this with me. Say, Lord, I ask you to give me supernatural wisdom. Give me the wisdom to be responsive. Give me the ability, God, to say yes to the call. Lord, I ask that you would help me even to understand that there's a time to work and a time to rest. Lord, would you help me today to enter your rest and to operate from the power that comes and the strength that comes from being renewed and being restored in my thinking according to the mind of Christ. Would you help me to be a discerner of that which is good, that which is right, that I would see what's right with people and not what's wrong with them, that I would not be critical of myself, but that I would be gracious uh, to myself and I would recognize that there's a time for everything. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to laugh. There's a time to dance and there's a time to cry. And some of you need to recognize that God's actually doing a mighty work in your life to prepare you for the next chapter. As we're ending this year, I wanna encourage you, make goals for yourself. What is God gonna do in 2022? I, I promise you one thing, he's got plans that are made that are good plans to prosper and not harm, to give you a future and hope. He just wants to be first. He just wants to be number one. If he's not first, then everything gets out of balance. If God's first, everything comes into order. And when you seek first the kingdom of God and you make that the one thing, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else, all these other things will work themselves out. So what problem, what challenge do you face that is too big for God? Amen, there's no challenge, no problem. And remember, bring all the problems to the table and he'll serve up solutions and together we can have a feast, amen? So God bless you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this year. Uh, 2021. We're so excited to be doing this with you. And I know some of you watch from around the world. Thank you for, for being a, a person who's been faithful to serving and, and you know choosing to serve the Lord in the kingdom. And uh, I just pray that the Lord would give you supernatural capacity and ability uh, to transition well into 2022 because I've seen some things that God's going to do in 2022. And it's amazing. I'm excited to see what he'll do in many of your lives. I know some of you are going to become master equippers. Some of you, he's raising up the prophetic voice in you. There's prophets and prophetic people uh, emerging. It'd be fun to see how God will bring you into your destiny, your purpose, and your calling. Uh, this is just the beginning. It's always just the beginning. No matter what you've been through, God knows. And just know this, he's not going to leave you hanging. He's going to grab you by the hand. He's going to say, let's go. And there's a time where you, you can rest. Like right now, 
it's just been snowing and dumping and we've been enjoying time together with family. My brother came over. We've been visiting and having some great times and, and just reminiscing about things that have taken place throughout the year. But God is on the move and he's chosen to use you for his kingdom, for his purpose and for his glory for such a time as this. So thank you everybody for joining in this year and, and, and for walking with us and for believing in the vision and the call of of the ministries, uh, Nathan French Ministries uh, has been uh, just incredibly blessed. We've hired more uh, workers to help us to process all of the requests and just requests continue to come in, prayer requests and prophetic words and, and requests for words and requests for encouragement. And it's just been a, it's just been a lot of fun. We just, um, to, we just put together a whole bunch of backpacks and things to give out to um, the homeless and our team is preparing to go out again. We've got backpacks that we're stuffing with all these great things, those little Bibles, we're putting toothpaste and toothbrushes and toilet paper, hygiene type prop, uh, stuff in hygiene products and um, blankets. And we've, we've given out sleeping bags and coats and hats and shoes. And just the, you know, in just the last few weeks, we've gathered more things to give away and to go into the cities and, and to encourage people and to bring hope. And so every time that we step out, every time that you step out, every time that you, you know, make a disciple, every time that you teach somebody and the things that you've learned, you're actually making disciples. And the Lord said that he wants everyone to gather 12. Whenever I see the number 112, sometimes it pops up on my screen, you know, that there's 112 people watching. And I'm like, oh, look at that, it's 112. And the Lord's message in that is, I want everyone to gather 12. He's saying, make disciples who make disciples, because if you just teach people like what you know, it's not enough. You have to teach them how to teach others. So you make disciples who make disciples, who make disciples, who make disciples, and if we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, we have to first understand it's no one else's responsibility to make disciples. You know, it's our responsibility to make disciples. We, as individuals, have to say yes to Jesus. And that is what I'm believing for this year as we're concluding. This is the last opportunity for us to uh, have this discussion before we step into the new year and what I'm believing for is that what we're doing right now in preparing, either establishing goals or, or setting clear vision for how are we going to make a difference and, and what will we do in 2022. And the word of the Lord that I received about 2022, that the Lord said, release this over my people. Those who believe it will start to see it manifest. And that is, you will know what to do in 2022. And when the Lord shows you the number 112, remember, he wants everyone to gather 12. He's saying, make disciples. 12 is the number for kingdom uh, discipleship, duplication, and divine government. And when the Lord shows you the number 12, remember, and the number 11 means no, no betrayer. The Lord teaches us even through numbers. There's a book on numbers in the Bible. 333, the Lord wants me to sit with him. 333 three, three means come sit with me. 333, three, three, come sit with me. Why? Jeremiah 33, three, call to me and I will answer and I will tell you things you didn't already know. Hidden secrets from my heart are available, but I need you to come and sit with me. So when I see 333, three, three, I know the Lord saying, come sit with me. He wakes me up in the middle of the night. It's 333. Three, three. It was happening to my wife for years and then me and then we both getting 333 three, three, and we knew that the Lord was saying, come sit with me. I want to talk to you. And 555, five, five, that's the Lord saying, I'm tripling the grace in your life. I'm, I'm doing something powerful. 1212, 12, it's like kingdom, discipleship, duplication. It's all in there. 444, four, four, there's something about the sound and the power of sound in 444. Four, four, it's also adds up to 12. So whatever it is that, that you're believing for, when I see 222, two, two, I think of Revelation 22, two, it's for the healing of the nations. The leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. So there's always a meaning. 111 could speak to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, grace, love, and mercy. You know, what's the devil do? He brings guilt, shame, and condemnation because he wants you to think you're disqualified. And the Lord's like, nope, you've been pre-approved, pre-qualified. I've already set things in motion. Yep, I saw you missed it. Now get on the horse, let's go. You know, it's like God wants to do something powerful. And he I know that he wants to show individuals what to do in 2022. So thank you guys for being a part. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing. 
um, the post. And, and again, thank you all of our monthly partners. We are so blessed by you. You empower us to want to go after the nations for God and it's working. We're seeing people get saved, healed and delivered all over the world. And you help us to accomplish the kingdom purpose in our lives. We're actually looking at some properties right now. We we're planning to purchase a building facility in North Tacoma. Uh, super excited about that. We've also just put in an offer on a property out by the ocean. Uh, and we're super excited about that. I believe that's going to be an incredible hub for revival. Um, we're also moving forward on um, on some land that we felt like God showed us. There, there's going to be a retreat center in eastern Washington. We'll, we'll tell you more about how that develops as we're moving forward. But we put out several offers on different properties that God has anointed and appointed for such a time as this to bring uh, not just discipleship, but to empower generations to be equipped and trained, Ephesians 4, and to send them out because we don't just want to gather people and then say, this is how many butts we have in seats. We want to empower people and release them into their kingdom purpose. That is the way the kingdom operates, and that's why we are here uh, in ministry to serve God and to serve people. So God bless you guys. We love you so much. Thank you again uh, for all of you who have supported this ministry this year. Uh, this is your last opportunity to sow into the ministry. If you desire to sow in a year in gift and you haven't had the chance to do that, you can do that today. Uh, just go to NathanFrenchMinistries.com and you can sow. Also, you can sow on AwakenThePlanet.com. Uh, this new year, we're going to be planning our uh, Awaken the Planet event Brazil. Super excited. And if you want to sow into uh, us being able to bring Awaken the Planet into the nations, we're going to be doing Awaken the Planet Canada, Awaken the Planet Brazil, Awaken the Planet Asia, and Awaken the Planet Phoenix. So get ready, guys. It's going to be incredible. We love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I hope you share the post. I hope you sow something. And if you haven't already, uh, and, and do something, whatever God tells you, but have fun with it and speak over your seed as you sow in. Uh, awakentheplanet.com uh, for our events and uh, also the e event center uh, that opens up in Ocean City. We're going to actually be announcing all of that and the address and all that soon. And we're going to be sending worshipers to go down and prayer people to go down and prepare the way of the Lord uh, at the ocean. So God bless you guys. We love you. And, uh, and check out the uh, rockrevivalcenter.com as well. If you want to sow into revival, uh, go to the rockrevivalcenter.com. And uh, we love you. God bless you. And happy new year.